Have we ever had a session with so many speakers under the time limit? I know this is serious. <laughs> Lots of time for questions. Okay. Uh, oh, they have to put it up there. Can you all put the slide back up on the screen? Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, and of course, all the uh, most PowerPoints will be available sometime after the conference uh, online. I encourage you to share the link with everybody you can who can watch the talks, see the slides, download PowerPoint, all sorts of things. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Uh, Larry Gould, who's professor of physics, my favorite subject other than meteorology, at the University of Hartford and past chair of the New England uh, section of the American Physical uh, Society. And he's been studying specifically the subjects of anthropogenic global warming for more than eight years. And I'm sure he's published numerous papers, even though it doesn't say here. I would hope, and I thank you. And without further ado, Dr. Gould. And if you need it, you've got two more or three more extra I minutes. Desperately so I desperately need it. I desperately need it. I make that decision. <laughs> session, session is the store. Watch the water. Can you start some I got it. I got it. Go ahead. I'd like to thank uh, the Heartland Institute for inviting me and um, I'm going to talk on a subject perhaps uh, many people aren't familiar with. So let me introduce it this way. Um, in the uh, fall of 2011, I attended an APS, uh, American Physical Society, American Association of Physics Teachers, uh, meeting uh, the first, uh, it was devoted to uh, climate change and um, the future of nuclear power. And uh, the, uh, per the introducer and the speaker who he introduced both uh, said that in terms of the skeptic side, uh, there's uh, just a, a very small amount of peer-reviewed uh, literature. So um, this, is, uh, this is from my home library, some of the uh, library books. Um, and just briefly, uh, this is um, Chris Horner's book, um, Red Hot Lies, about deception, dishonesty, and fraud. And this is the NIPCC report, Singer and Itzo, loads of peer-reviewed references. This is Plimmer's book, Heaven and Earth, 2300 references, mostly scientific. This is, but is it true? It's student projects, which includes AGW, Anthropogenic Global Warming, with a critical examination of the evidence. This was first called to my attention by Dick Lindzen, and I've heard him recommend it uh, several times. So before I uh, uh, left Hartford, I was preparing for the lecture uh, by looking into some books on environmental science. And uh, this is uh, called uh, Science, in, see this isn't working too, oh, here we are. Uh, Environmental Science Inquiry and Applications. And uh, this is a quote from the uh, book. Um, see, can I pull this up? That's better. <laughs> um, so uh, the American Geophysical Union, one of the nation's largest and most respected scientific organizations has stated that quote, as best as can be determined, the world is now warmer than it has been at any point in the last two millennia. And if current trends continue, by the end of the century, it will be hotter than at any point in the last two million years. Uh, any underlines in what follows in here is my stress. Okay, this was uh, in, in, this is in the sixth edition. 
So I'm going to talk about um, this connection that I indicated in the last slide. Uh, on the one hand, there's educational issues. On the other hand, there is the scientific societies issue, and they're connected. So for education, scientific societies, I'll just skip over this. Uh, AGW and education. So here are some of the environmental science books that uh, I looked at. A uh, colleague in chemistry gave me a few that he was using. Uh, each of the stickies here represents uh, errors that I have found. Um, <laughs> and um, so this is uh, the state of science education in environmental science. And uh, what we have really is uh, basically a porcupine of errors. <laughs> environmental science toward a sustainable future, another uh, text. Quote, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has presented clear evidence of the changes in Earth's climate and has assigned its cause to human agency. Quote, the global use of fossil fuels is rising every year, and if nothing is done to reduce it, 21st century is likely to see climate changes that are dangerous, possibly catastrophic. Sea levels will keep rising. These are some of the stickies. This is in the 11th edition. Taking sides. This is sort of a balanced one, might think clashing views on environmental science, and you have pros and cons as selected by final selection by uh, an advisory board. Uh, it's edited by a, a Thomas Easton, and his introduction says, uh, perhaps worst of all those uh, on low-lying South Pacific islands, which are expecting to be wholly inundated by rising seas, it's one of the many uh, environmental disasters that he refers to in his uh, introduction. So he is taking sides, but he, because he doesn't take any other side except this one. <laughs> this is in the 15th edition. I went to his website. Um, he belongs to Vement, uh, which is the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. <laughs> and um, the idea is uh, we want to allow the Earth's biosphere to return to good health. Uh, seems to be an intrinsic view of value. The Earth is intrinsically valuable. And he's looking toward the voluntary extinction of one species, Homo sapiens, us. This is a quote. Um, I actually had to go back uh, and do another search of the web because I, you, know, you could get the wrong name associated with the book, but it's the same guy. Uh, that's a actually, I was going to say that someone here, when I told this, said uh, he should set an example. Confirmation bias uh, is part of the problem in education. X believes Y is true. Only a small amount of weak evidence is necessary to maintain that belief. It's warmer yesterday than it, uh, than it was the day before, the week before. OK, there you go, global warming. Uh, not a, no amount of strong evidence is sufficient to change it. Okay, um, Some of the graphs that I'll show you, uh, temperature changes, carbon dioxide versus carbon dioxide. Um, it's not, uh, it's not a problem. Contradictions will be tolerated. Um, I uh, tried to get a course through a uh, committee, and one of the comments I had that I need to balance my references more. They shouldn't be right on the right, and the person said, like Heartland Institute, uh, nor th should they be on the left. OK, so this is a political c determination. Uh, this is a scientific issue. It's not about right or left. Okay? So what does balance mean for this person? Alchemy versus chemistry, astronomy versus astrology, evolution versus special creation, equal time to each in the classroom? Is that what one wants? So for example, if you're in chemistry um, and you're trying to turn base metals into gold, that's part of the uh, alchemy part. Um, Chemistry teaches, however, that uh, getting gold would require a nuclear transformation, not an electron uh, transformation as in chemical reactions. So we're training people to come out of the classroom and take apart and make a contribution to, uh, to science. I think this sort of goes against it. This is, you know, K through 12, spreading false ideas to children. Here's a curve. You're going, here's the 650,000 years ago. Here's the present. Uh, the orange curve is CO2, and the blue is temperature. So the CO2 peaks first, and then the temperature uh, peaks. 
Now, if I recall, Willie soon told me that they told the publishers that they've got it wrong, that it should be this way, that uh, it's temperature that peaks first, and that drives the CO2, it's sort of reasonable. You know, the oceans occupy 71% of the Earth's surface. It gets warm, carbon dioxide gets driven out of the seas. Uh, I don't know whether it's been changed, but there you are. Um, I gave a uh, AGW course in the fall of 2009 um, because they needed someone to teach a freshman uh, seminar. And I asked the question, what is global warming? I had students uh, just write right there and then type it up and send it to me. So in red over here, this is one of my best students. According to the theory of global warming, the greenhouse gases are ripping a hole in the ozone layer of the atmosphere, consequently allowing harmful rays of the sun to reach the surface and trapping them. Um, uh, I don't know what's the trapping but, and why they can't go back out through the same hole, but uh, there you are. This is a cry from uh, the UK. Uh, this is a quote. I'm a physics teacher. Over the past year, the UK Department of Education, this board changed the subject. Calculations of very solar physics are absent. Now everything must be described in words. Pupils debate topics like global warming and nuclear power without any real understanding of how they work or what radiation is. This is the death of physics. Uh, I, I think you can't uh, restrict the, uh, the weirdness that's going on in education, the misinformation and the bad thinking to uh, simply global warming. I used to fantasize that you can do that. I don't think you can. You know, it's a methodology that's, being, that's coming along uh, with this environmental science. HEW and scientific societies. Now, the American Meteorological Society uh, had a tour canceled by an administrator in the Northwest. Finally, it was rescheduled. They had about 500 people in the rescheduling. Uh, this was people to, pre to pre present the AGW position. Uh, the Royal Society becomes more of an advocacy uh, organization. The National Academy of Science, Dick Lindzen, has his paper rejected by the same organization, which is rather unprecedented. The New England section of the APS Executive Committee cancels but does not reschedule a skeptic member's presentation. Guess who the skeptic member is? <laughs> The American Chemical Society member has the administ administrative blocks uh, to conducting invited skeptic session uh, at the, uh, in Denver. It finally went ahead, and this, uh, I spoke with this person. Um, Physics Today is the American Institute of Physics primary periodical, and it trumpets AGW. So that's to say that it doesn't have skeptics, but it's overwhelmingly AGW. So for example, in the 2007 issue of Physics Today, you have these increasing curves showing that global warming is getting more dangerous. Pachori says uh, temperatures are increasing. Well, let's look at the curve again. Uh, if you lived in 1940, then presumably you would say there's global warming by this kind of antic. And if you lived in 1950, then you see the temperatures dropping. So you could get global cooling. Pick your points, get your, get your conclusion. That's not science. And uh, the, uh, the vertical axis actually is uh, tenths of a degree. So one would like students to understand what's the relationship between tenths of a degree and local disasters. Uh, this is the IPCC, reality versus alarm. IPCC's projections, they don't call it predictions, they call it projections. Um, uh, the, uh, there's not a single projection that has come out correct relative to the observations. This is carbon dioxide, which is driving the increase in temperature. This is the non-increase in temperature. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this stuff. This is the prevailing authorities. That's another uh, thing that's done. Uh, I think I went a little too far here. Um, uh, Gore and Pachori uh, got a Nobel Prize, as you may know. Uh, Iva Javer uh, is a Nobel Prize physicist, says that this was a poorly uh, given prize. I mean, they shouldn't have been awarded it. Iva, <clears throat> Iva Jeva unfortunately resigned from the American Physical Society in October of 2011 because of their incontrovertible statement, and I'll show you what that is. Um, 
this clash between evidence and whew, the, the clash between evidence and um, uh, hypotheses, uh, Feynman says, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make any difference how beautiful, I'm trying to imitate Feynman, how beautiful your guess is, doesn't make any difference how smart you are, who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. This is Al Gore's, um, Al, Al Gore's science fiction. His inconvenient truth has been uh, shot full of holes by uh, Marlowe. Actually, it, the holes are there. He, Marlowe Lewis simply pointed them out. Uh, um, physicists like Feynman, uh, curious characters, uh, students should know whether there's a temperature uh, that is going up, and there isn't, and I'll just skip over this. Now, here we go again. APS sticks to its guns, however, the American Physical Society, and it shoots itself in the foot. Uh, let me show you how that works. Statement of the APS Council that was adopted in November 2007, the evidence is incontrovertible. Global warming is occurring. Now, the APS statement does not claim, it is claimed, that AGW evidence is incontrovertible. It does say that the global temperature rise is incontrovertible, but not AGW. And uh, I'm co-editor of the New England section of the American Physical Society newsletter. I got a call from someone at APS, um, administrator, who said, you can't say that uh, AGW, we say AGW is uh, incontrovertible, okay? And uh, so I just modified things a little, but pointed to the reference where they say what they say, and I'm gonna show you what they say. Um, usually people hate to be quoted out of context. In this case, it's the reverse. Here's the context. The evidence is incontrovertible. Global warming is occurring. If no mitigating actions are taken, significant disruptions of the Earth's physical and ecological systems, social systems, security, and human health are likely to occur. We must reduce emissions of gases uh, greenhouse gases beginning now. So they're not saying that AGW is incontrovertible? Moving on. By the way, even this statement that they wanted you to accept, global warming, uh, the evidence is incontrovertible, global warming is occurring, even that's false. Go. Because the te no temperature trend increase over about the last decade. APS members, however, have rebelled against society's non-objective assessment. And when I say society, I mean the administrators who are running this, uh, this plan, okay? And regarding the national policy on climate change, an open letter was sent to the Council of the American, uh, to, uh, an open letter to the Council of the American Physical Society. As physicists who are familiar with the science issues and as current and past members of the American Physical Society, we, the undersigned, urge the Council to revise its current statement on climate change as follows, as, so as to more accurately represent the current state of the science. Now, I'm gonna skip over that and get down to the last thing we suggest to uh, modify the statement and say, the APS supports an objective scientific effort, et cetera, for meeting challenges on, of climate changes regardless of the cause, okay? This, um, this statement was uh, heavily uh, put together by some of us, Major Fred Singer, who I thank for it. Now, um, there are some uh, behind the scenes causes for the corruption of science societies and science education. Here are some of them. For APS distortions of science, you can see this on the PDF file that's going to be on uh, the Heartland site. Uh, for APS distortions of science, you can see that a uh, website had, contains the open letter and also uh, physicists, including two Nobel laureates who signed, signed uh, onto it. Uh, for the National Academy of Sciences distortion of science, see the article by Richard Lindzen, Climate science, is it currently designed to answer questions? For the Royal Society and its corruption of science, see the document, uh, Andrew Montford, nullius in verba, which means on the word of no one, the society goes back to the time of Newton. Uh, I can say, uh, like Chris Mon Monkton, thank you for voting for me. <laughs> uh, on the word of no one, 
um, I'll be through shortly. The Royal uh, Society and Climate Change, um, and uh, they have taken a stand, the Royal Society has, uh, on uh, global warming, and in the 1700s, they stated that they, they, not, they would not take any such stand. Okay. Climate gate, everyone knows about. Um, the rules of the game uh, is part of the documents in climate gate. And what a uh, quote is from this document, the rules of the game, those who deny climate change are irritating but unimportant. The argument is not about if we should deal with climate change, but how we should deal with climate change. No, the argument is about if we should deal with climate change. You're irritating. Char no. <laughs> Charlie, on the Charlie Rose Show, uh, Gore was asked by Rose, do you know any credible scientist who says, wait a minute, this hasn't been proven, is there still a debate? Gore replied, the debate's over. The people who dispute the international consensus on global warming are in the same category now with the people who think the moon landing was staged on a movie lot in Arizona. So this guy doesn't think so, and you've seen him earlier in the conference. Who was he? That's Harrison Schmidt. Okay. <laughs> And uh, he is very concerned about the educational issue. OK, almost through. Uh, uh, more of climate gate emails, hiding the decline. I'll just skip over that. And to show you the connections in the climate gate of the various organizations around the world is NOAA, NASA, and so on. It's a, it's a huge web. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. This is from Walter Scott's Marmion. In addition to the CRU and, and the UK Met Office, we find the US government agencies, universities, research labs funded by the US government. How much? Paid by big oil? It's pointing to Heartland, OK? That's, uh, this is for 2011, about 7 million, OK? Um, this this, 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 and this, uh, various government agencies, how much? About two billion. I, did, I left out the non-governmental organizations. Okay, so skipping on, um, scientific imagination, according to Feynman, that what which we imagine in science has to be consistent with everything we know. Um, if you don't do that, then you can get this. This is the scientific solution you came up with, and this is the global warming volcano that this person, which looks like An Uncle Sam is being thrown into. Uncle Sam could here represent science and science education, and this guy <laughs> could represent the science, in quotes, advisors and the policy makers. So in conclusion, please keep in mind the difference between what a scientific society stands for and who stands for that society? This isn't being done by the members of the APS, of the ACS, of the AMS, of the uh, uh, geophysical societies. This is being done by administrators in these organizations. And uh, it's in the newsletter, and there's all sorts of references in the PDF file. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you to our speakers. Hopefully we can take just a few minutes for